What's up? I'm Vin, and today we're looking at this question from the AP Calc AB and BC exam from 2019. So you can take a second to read through this. But what we have going on here is we have fish entering at a lake at a rate modeled by E of T. So just know E of T is a rate function which tells us how fast fish are entering the lake. And we're also told how fast fish leave the lake at the rate modeled by L of T. And it's important to know that these are both rates of change and the units are in fish per hour. So to get started here, what we want to do for part A, we're looking for how many fish enter the lake over the five hour period from t equals zero to t equals five. And for entering the lake, we should be focused on E of t. So what we're going to do is from t equals zero to t equals five, we're doing this definite integral of E of t dt. Now just real quick, just for the concept of why we're doing the integral, remember the units are fish per hour. So you don't have to write this part out, but this is just to help you understand it. And the units for dt are hours. So when you multiply e of t by dt, the hours over hours cancel, telling you just fish, which is what we want to know, how many fish are entering the lake. So this is the idea that we're using for this question. And now the rest of this is just all calculated work. So we can invest in our future happiness here by typing in e of t and l of t into y1 and y2. So we got 20 plus 15 sine, and we've got pi times t, but we're going to use x divided by 6. And for the y2, we're just going to type in L of t. We've got 4 plus, we've got this function here, 2 to the power 0 0.1. We'll just write 0.1, and instead of t, we're using x, and that's being squared. So now we'll go back to the main screen, but we want to know the integral of just e of t. So we're pressing math 9 from 0 to 5 and the reason why we type this in ahead of time is so that we don't have to keep retyping it over and over again because now I could just press VARS right arrow go to function and now Y1 is a nice little shortcut here that I don't have to keep retyping this over and over so when we look at this here this integral I'll just write out its value is equal to 153 .4 Five, and I'll stop here. I'll round out three decimal places. But what they want us to do is they want us to round our answer to the nearest whole number. So this is going to be closer to 153. So that tells us here that we're going to have 100, uh, 153 fish enter the lake from t equals 0 to t equals 5. Now for the next part here, what we want to do is now we're looking for what is the average number of fish that leave the lake per hour over the five hour period. So with the wording here, it can be a bit tricky to know which formula to use. A lot of people are gonna mix up, are we using this formula, the average rate of change formula, or are we using this one? And the trick to knowing which one to use is looking for what are they, which function are they referring to? And if we look very carefully here, they're saying what is the average number of fish that leave the lake per hour? And if you think about it, L of t, this function here, is measured in the units fish per hour. So since the units match directly, that tells us that we're looking for the average function value of L of t. Because if we want to know the average number of fish that leave per hour, L of t is telling us how fast they're leaving fish per hour. So that's the one we're targeting here. And we're going to use that second equation here. So just be careful when you read through this. You have to just make sure that if they're asking you for the average function value and the units match, then you're using the average function value formula. So we have 1 over 5 minus 0, the integral from 0 to 5, and we've got L of t dt. Now this, we could just simplify. This is just 1 fifth, the integral from 0 to 5, and we've got L of t dt. And in this case, what we have to do is we're just going to type in 1 fifth, which we could have just written 0.2, but we could press alpha y equals enter to make a fraction. And now we've got math 9, and our integral is going from 0 to 5. And remember, L of t we wrote in the y2 section. So I could retype that all over again, or I could just press VARS, right arrow, function y2, and I don't have to bother typing that whole mess all over again. Remember, we already wrote L of t in the y2 section here. So now we just press enter, and we could record our answer to part B, to the nearest thousandths place, we have 6.059, and 
and the units are fish per hour. So that's our solution to part B. Now for part C, this is where things start to pick up a little bit. The last parts are sometimes the trickiest. Sometimes they'll put the hardest part of the question in the middle, like in part B or something, but part C is where things start to get a little bit more intense. So now we want to know what is the greatest number of fish in the lake from T equals zero to T equals eight. So the idea behind anytime you want to find a maximum or a minimum value, you have to start thinking about derivatives. So just the concept that you need is that the amount of fish is equal to, and you don't have to copy this down in your solution, but the idea is that it's the number of fish that enter. So the number of fish that enter minus the number of fish that leave. All right, like that's the idea with how many fish are in this lake or whatever this body of water is. It's the number of fish that enter minus the number of fish that leave. So if I want to know the maximum amount, so this is the number of fish like just in the lake in general. So if I want to know the maximum of A of T, then I have to do A prime of T, which is equal to the rate that fish enter. That's E of T. See, E of T is directly the rate that they enter. Don't make the mistake of writing a prime here because remember, E of T is already a derivative in a sense. Minus the rate that the fish leave is L of T. So that's the concept that we're using to start setting this up. And what we're trying to look for here is we're trying to look for when is the number of fish in the lake at a maximum. So what we're going to do in this question now is we're going to set A prime of T we're going to set it equal to zero. So we want to know when is a prime of t equal to zero. And remember, we're looking over the interval from zero to eight. So that's what we're going to do for this next part here. We're just going to make a little space, move this up. So what we're trying to find, this is all calculator work. We're doing e of t minus l of t. But remember, e of t is the y1. So I could press vars right arrow function y1, and I'm writing y1 minus y2. So I just go to the hotkeys here and I have y1 minus y2. And a little trick is turn the equal sign off on y1 and y2. That way we're only going to be graphing what we have in black. And remember, the interval was from 0 to 8. So I would adjust your window from 0 to 8. That's That way we're only looking at the space that we need to be looking at so we don't accidentally pick the wrong answer. And notice we have just one root here. And that's going to be a significant value. So we press second trace number two for the zero. And we're scrolling all the way. The key is look at the y value. See, I'm at 12. And now there I could see the pointer. So I hit enter right before the root. I scroll through the root to the negatives. I press enter a second time. I press enter a third time. And that's our significant value here. So I'm going to need this critical value in a moment. So I, I quit out of this and I press second, this minus sign for the answer, and I press enter. And now, just so I don't have to keep typing that on this screen, I'm going to press store, and I'll store it as the letter A. That way, every time we write the letter A, it's our critical value. But just to show all of our work here, we'll say A prime of T equals 0 when T equals, and this is 6.203564, and so on. But we don't have to write all the digits out. Technically, we only have to write three of them, but we'll just write a few more here. Uh, just for this part. So then what you want to do from here is you have to think about the closed interval method for finding maximum values. So what you want to do is you want to plug the critical points. And in this case, we only have one critical point. We only have the critical point 6.203. So we'll make this decimal a little bit nicer. 203.564. And I know this goes on and on. And our endpoints, remember, were 0 and 8. So we want to know what is the amount of fish at 0, what is the amount of fish at 8, and what is the amount of fish at this value here. Well, to be careful with this, just know you should always check, is there any fish in the lake at the start of the question? And if we scroll back to the beginning, there is no fish. They're, not, they're saying there's no fish at the beginning of the question. So that means that we could just get started with this. So now we have to think about, well, how would I begin to talk about a function a of t? a of t is going to be the integral of a prime, which is going to be the integral, and we're going to turn this into an area function, 
it's going to be the integral from 0 to t. And the only thing I would do here is re-index this, because if you have a t in your upper limit, you shouldn't write t in place of these functions. So I could say something like e of x minus l of x, and we write our dx on the outside. And remember, they told there's no fish at the start of the question here. So what that means is when I go to plug in, what is a of 0? a of 0 I know is just 0 because it's the integral from 0 to 0. So that's there's no fish in the lake at the start of the question. But now for the rest of this, I want to know how many fish are in the lake at this critical value here. And remember, we already stored this as the letter A. And just know y3 is equal to e of t minus l of t. So when I want to write my integrand in a moment, I only have to use y3. So what we have now at this significant value, I have math 9 from 0 to a. I'm going to just write a here. And then y3 is my difference of my rates. Okay, once again, you could retype this stuff all in, but it's just it's kind of a waste of time once you write it once. So we type this in here and notice we could just record this value here. We have 135.0149. And now if I want to know how many fish are in there after eight hours, I just change the upper limit to eight. Okay, you could see here that a of eight would be the integral from zero to eight. And that's just a little shortcut. Once again, the goal is to save as much time as possible. And if we work this one out here, this is going to round to 80.91. And this will be 998 here like this. So remember, what was the question asking for here? They want to know at what time t is the number of fish in the lake greatest. And we would say here, the, like just looking at the list, that the number of fish is greatest at t equals and this value of t here. So for this last part here, we want to know is the rate of change in the number of fish increasing or decreasing at t equals 5. Now for this question, we have to be very, very careful. They're not asking us is the number of fish increasing or decreasing. They're asking us is the rate of change in the number of fish increasing or decreasing. And remember, the rate of change in the number of fish we define to be a prime of t. We wrote this down before. a prime of t is the rate of change in the number of fish, and it's equal to the rate that fish enter minus the rate that fish leave the lake. So what we're trying to find here is the function a prime, is that function increasing or decreasing at t equals 5? So this is a derivative concept where if I want to know if a prime is going up at t equals 5, then I need to look at the derivative of a prime, which is a double prime, and I'm evaluating it at t equals 5, and that's going to give me e prime of 5 minus l prime of 5. And the calculator is going to tell me this. Remember, we saved this in the calculator before. y3 was equal to e of t minus l of t. So what we have over here, this, this piece right here is y sub 3. So all I need to do to find the derivative of y sub 3 is I could press second trace dy dx, that's number 6, and I'm evaluating the derivative at t equals 5. So we type in 5, and notice dy dx, it says negative 10 point 723 if we round to the nearest thousands place. So I'd have negative 10. So this is negative 10.723. And what this is telling us right now, since the derivative of a prime is coming out negative here, that tells us the rate of change in the number of fish is decreasing at t equals 5. Before we close this out, it's worth mentioning that if instead this question had said is the number, so if this just said is the number of fish in the lake increasing or decreasing, then you would just compare E of 5 and L of 5 directly. And if the fish are entering the lake faster than they're leaving, the number of fish in the lake is going up. And if the fish are leaving the lake at a greater rate than they are entering the lake, that means the number of fish in the lake is decreasing. But just be careful. They were probably hoping to trap a few people on that idea. When they threw in that phrase rate of change, that throws the whole question off. 
Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the Calculus AB BC 2019 question one. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you got any requests, leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.